let's say your agency offers SEO. Let's say they offer pay-per-click advertising. They offer Facebook ads, Google business profile, rankings, whatever it might be. How do you know what they are in need of unless you ask the right questions? What's going on, James Bonnetties here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why every new agency owner and old agency owners struggle with closing deals on the phone. And this is not a sales training. This is literally gonna be a few changes that you can make in the conversation that will take you from struggling to close clients to easily closing them. In our agency, we basically take something called a client qualification interview. We call this an interview with potential customers, potential clients. And the reason why this works so well is because the biggest mistake that new people make is a lot of times they're too broad in the conversation. So if I'm talking to a dentist who does implants, right? It's a decently uh, good paying niche to get into. And if I'm talking to one of those, most of the time, what happens is, is that if they're, if you're basically new in your agency, you're asking them, do you need more leads and customers, right? And the simple answer to that is, yes, I need more clients. I need to do more implants. I need to do these things. But unless you ask deeper questions, most of the time you sound like just like another marketer, right? You don't sound any different. And the whole point of the client qualification interview is to sound different than everybody else. So what I want to do in this video is go through uh, browse through it and share some of the things that you can do now and implement now to make you sound more uh, professional, make you sound like you know what the heck you're doing and make you stand out from everybody else. You've heard it before. The person who asks the most questions usually walks away with a deal. Now, when I say deal, it could be a deal on one end and it could be a no on the other end. Right. So in this case, we want to ask qualifying questions throughout the entire conversation, because if you don't, you're not controlling the conversation and you need to control the conversation always. So as I go through this quick script and I'll probably leave, you know, a link down below that you can grab it for or just put a comment down below and ask for the script and I'll be more than happy to give it to you. It's basically a line of questioning, right? It's going to help you better understand the business that you're going to be working with instantly making you sound like an expert and help you determine which services to offer. And that's another problem, right? Let's say your agency offers SEO. Let's say they offer pay-per-click advertising. They offer Facebook ads, Google business profile, rankings, whatever it might be. How do you know what they are in need of unless you ask the right questions? Okay. Getting more leads and customers for somebody who does dental implants is an obvious answer to an obvious question. That is not what we need to know. We need to know because we assume that everybody wants more leads and customers. We need to know what have they tried in the past? Why didn't it work? And why do they need this now? Okay. And so essentially you just want to say, Hey, the person's name, I'm going to ask you. So assume, let's, let's back up. Let's assume, right. That you got 20 minutes with this guy right? It could be you did it through cold email, cold calling. You did maybe even Upwork. You got to, uh, you know, they post on Upwork. Uh, it could have been from a leads and advance method that you could watch that video up there. Uh, it could be a BNI group. It could be a referral. It could, I mean, there's so many ways to land clients. That is not a lot of times people think landing clients is the problem or finding clients to land are the, is the problem. The reality is you're just not asking the right questions. All right. So, Essentially, you just want to start the conversation with, can you tell me more about your business? And you just kind of leave it open to that. Let them tell you, well, I do dental implants. I've been doing it since whatever. They give you an overview of everything. And then you're going to deep dive into it. If they don't answer these fully, you want to make sure that they do, right? So who typically uses your services? Uh, they probably will tell you what they do. You already probably know what they do. What is the average sale amount? And this is huge for later in the conversation. And do you typically get repeat business from your customers and how often? Okay. And in another video, I will probably do a complete walkthrough with, uh, with an actual case study of this. But as long as you can implement this now and ask these questions now, when you're on the phone, the next time I can promise you the conversation goes a lot better. And so the question goal is I'm trying to learn more about their business. All right. So they can better understand the services offers that they want to advertise the typical customer profile and the amount of money a customer is worth to them. This info will help me with uh, advertising, messaging, targeting, and how much money my services can make them. All right. And so 
again, this is just kind of explaining what the goal is by asking these questions. All right. Uh, step two is what is, what is it that you're looking to do with your business in terms of goals? So again, deep dive questions. All right. What's your revenue goal? Do you have any plans to grow your staff? Do you want to open more locations? Are you looking to grow to a point that you can sell it? Right. Again, the goal here is here's what I want to know their dreams when it comes to their business. This is what they ultimately want to achieve. And so if their goal is no, I just want to reach out to my current client list. I want to make sure that they come in for a checkup. I want to make sure that they always remember me. I want to, I want to be branded in their home. That's not going to be a lead gen service. That's going to be like a message marketing service, right? A database activation uh, or reactivation. It's going to be, you know, sending out reminders. It could be sending out text messages. It could be emailing them once a quarter, once a month. It could be a newsletter, a simple newsletter that goes out every quarter to their past customers. You know, how to keep your dental implants from breaking, how to, you know, make sure that they stay the same color as the rest of your teeth, things like that, right? I'm not a dental implants person, but those are some of the things that you would want to know. Okay. All right. The next question would be, what do you, what have you done so far to achieve these goals? So in questions one, I want to know about your business, right? Now I have the numbers to back up what I'm, I'm about to pitch them. Two is what are you looking, what's your ultimate goal? People will always say money. I want more lazy customers. I want more money, blah, blah, blah. But in the reality is, is it could be a revenue goal. Cool. But why? right? I'd like to free up time. It could be, um, I want to hire more people to free up my time, but I need the revenue to do it. Cool. Uh, do you want to open up more uh, locations? So another thing would be like, yeah, I have a huge opportunity three towns over, uh, and I would love to have the revenue to be able to do that. Again, that's, that's the underlying goals from their first answer that they'll give. And then down here is now, this is where kind of we're, we're going to pigeon toe them um, in when we pitch them, because what have you done so far? Because if they say no to you, right, let's say they, they, we get to the end of this and they say, no, you could always use this to pitch and tell them back them in a quarter and tell them the real reason why they're saying no. All right. And I'll give you an example. Are you currently doing any advertising? What has worked the best up to this point for getting new customers? Do you use any special offers? And what further advertising were you planning? And the goal here is they're going to figure out what they've done in the uh, up to this point in the past. Do they have a plan or are they ha like just wishing for it, right? I also want to know how they are currently getting customers. This can help me in planning what I'm going to offer them. Last, I want to see how much further uh, thought that they've given to advertising their business. It can help me see what's on their mind in terms of planning and budgeting, all right? And so again, in number three, are you currently advertising? If the answer is no, great. The answer is yes. Now that's the backup question is great. How's it going? Do you know what your return on investment is? Do, are you happy with the company that's doing it? Uh, what's worked best? So maybe, maybe that you can even ask that question before because they're, they're going to say nothing's worked. That's why I'm talking to you, right? Do you have any special offers? Like do they do, you know, a dental implant will sometimes do like, you know, you know, two implants for the price of one, right? It's a better way to word it. And uh, what further advertising were you planning? For example, you're, we're on the phone today. What is it that you're looking to do? What is it that you were planning on doing that, what, you know, for the reason why we're talking today? Okay. Let them spill it all out. Uh, and then what would you say have, has been your biggest struggles in terms of growing your business? Again, now the pain point hits. Like, what have they tried? Why isn't it working? Has anything been stopping you from getting more advertising in place? This is where they're going to tell you. Yes. Everything is stopping me. I've paid for it before. I've gotten no results or I don't have enough money, right? Which is a really an unqualifying question. It's a qualifying question to you to unqualify them. Uh, but again, here we are in, in a sense of we're going to we're about to get our answer to what we're about to ask them. Okay. What has stopped you from doing it in the past? Okay. And what is going to stop you from doing it in the future? Essentially, do you feel you have a big enough team to handle any more growth? Now I want to know. If I'm going to start spending this guy's money and running ads and I'm getting him leads, is anybody going to follow up with him outside of our automation? You know, we'll have automation in place, but you know, when somebody replies back, will somebody actually call them? And what do you think the biggest obstacle to hitting your goals is? And again, we're tying it back to here. So if your goal is to open up a, a, another office and you need the revenue to do so, why haven't you already done it? Okay. And that's where they're going to admit to you fault 
They're going to admit to you failure. They're going to admit to you that they can't do it on their own. They're going to admit to you that everybody who's tried has failed, and that's why they're on the phone with you. And here I'm bringing the light why they need help, okay? All of their answers here help vocalize their weaknesses in their business so they can have that front of mind. You will learn more about opportunities to help them, and this helps solidify their need for an expert like you to help them get to their goals. Now, you got to watch out for red flags, right? If they don't want to share information, they're not very happy uh, where they are and not receptive to your questions, they're condescending and have an attitude, brand new, right? Six months or less, single person uh, business, so they're a solopreneur, any answer indicating no money or willingness to invest, and question four answer, nothing stop them and no obstacles. So I've been in situations where I've said, what do you think would be the biggest obstacle to hitting your goals? And they say to me, none, I don't really have any obstacles. Now, I've been doing this for a very long time, so most of the time I will come back very hard at them. See, when you guys, you're going to get to a point in your agency where you're talking to somebody and if it feels to be a waste of time, I am going to make sure that you know that you are wasting my time, right? My time is worth just as much as yours, bro, okay? And so, you know, you're going to sit up there all high and mighty. You, you, you got on the phone with me. And you're going to sit there yeah, in your head thinking like, geez, I, you know, I make a thousand bucks an hour over here. Like, well, you know, this is kind of a waste of time. And so I'm thinking the same thing. All right. And I'm asking questions in that way. Uh, and so if they, if they hit me with that, oh, there's nothing stopping me. I, I would say, great. Then why haven't you done it already? And I just wouldn't say anything. They are going to either hang up the phone on me or eventually they're going to break down and they're going to admit the pain points if they already haven't. Okay. And if they already have, I would say, great. So you, you don't think anything is stopping you. Well, you did tell me that you've hired marketers before they've gotten, you no leads and customers. There was no tracking. You don't even know what they were doing. Wouldn't that be something that's stopping you from growing? Cause what else are you doing? So if that marketer sucked, what else have you done? So something is stopping you. Am I right? And so <clears throat> at this point you have already grasped what is going on. And I like to call this a triage call. You can call it um, you know, a setup call. This is not where we are kind of closing the deal in some sense. If it's a great conversation, now is the time to close it. If it's kind of wish-washy and you kind of get that feeling of like, I just kind of want to get off the phone and gather my thoughts, you can skip down to here and go to option two and say, look, I'll tell you what, let me look over. I've written a ton of stuff down. I want to go through my notes. Uh, I want to comprehend everything that you said, and I'm going to come back uh, to you with what I believe, if I believe I can help you. Does that sound fair? And they will most likely say, sure. And then you have to specifically say a time, a date and time. Tomorrow at 2 p.m. work? work? No, that's not going to work. How about Thursday at 1? How about Thursday at 5? If they keep saying no, great. Why don't you give me a time because I'm really, really booked. I have a ton more calls to do. So can you give me a time? Let's lock it in. Otherwise, you know this is never going to happen. So if it's never going to happen, I'd rather than know now than plan everything that I'm going to plan out over the next 24 hours. Like I'm holding their hand to the fire. I'm not accepting a wish-washy answer, okay? Closed sale or booked next call. That's the only thing, right? A closed sale, books, booked next call. I should say three things. Booked next call or a no, a hard no, all right? Now, if right? Let's assume it's like, let's say they said to me, look, I, I really just want, like I mentioned before, I really just want to stay in contact. I want to bring past customers in that will increase my revenue. And that's really all, that's all I want to do. So today, so then what you're going to do is you're going to pitch them that if they've already admitted to you what they want, we could do something, a service called message marketing, right? And so here's a, a quick little script. All right, based on your priority of bringing in new sales, why don't we start with a simple appointment booking service I use to help dent, uh, dentists, <clears throat> dental surgeons get more sales from their current customer list, get more people in the door. And uh, of course, you're going to change this to the niche, right? So if it's a dental implant, I would say, all right, uh, based on the priority of you staying in contact with your past list. You know, you said there's people who've come in a year ago, got a dental implant. You haven't talked to them since. What if they're having another problem with another tooth? You don't want them going some, somewhere else. So the first thing we, we need to do is we need to set you up with a good campaign, message marketing campaign. I've done it in the past. You don't have to worry about that. And we will set that all up. All right. This is going to allow me 
to bring in results to you as quickly as humanly possible, all right? The only thing I need from you is what kind of offer can I offer them in the marketing, in the messaging that will really get them in the door? Is there anything that you would be uh, willing to offer them now, right? And most people will say, sure, you know, you know, have you gotten dental implants from us in the past? Great news, we're offering 20% you know, off on your next appointment, whatever it might be, right? So, because insurance is not covering your dental implants, all right? Uh, it's all cash pay. And so, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, we uh, just need to discuss what offer you like to promote and whether you like me to book the appointments for you or if you'd rather have your staff take care of that. Then I'll start the campaign and then we'll go over the results from there. Does that sound good? All right. And so, that's for message marketing. Um, and so, one of the things that I, I, I want to jump in here, all right? and say is obviously there's a little bit more to do here. Like, do you have a contract? Uh, are you doing, um, you know, in this case, and what we always do is trial services. And so what I would say is, look, you know, we don't lock uh, anybody into a contract until after our trial service. And even then, sometimes we do, it depends on the relationship we have. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be running a trial. What a trial means is I get to prove to you what I'm worth to you, and you get to prove to me that you can handle the inbound, the outbound, and all that good stuff. Because my data will show if you're not following up with past customers fast enough, unfortunately, the campaign will die. So maybe you'll find some holes in your business and I'll find some holes in mine. Does that sound fair? We're both on trial here. And it kind of relieves the stress and everything else along with it. And when you get to do that, you're building a relationship you know, reciprocity, whatever you might want to call it. You're not strong arming them. You're not hard closing them. The hard close comes usually never in a trial because they're either going to say, I want to move forward with a contract or I don't, right? If it's a lead gen service, uh, this is th this is like, all right, I'm going to run some pay-per-click advertising, right? For dental implants, pay-per-click is good. I don't really like Facebook for this. So I would say pay-per-click advertising for this. Um, all right, so uh, based on your priority of bringing in new customers, why don't we start with a simple trial where I'll send you some referrals, calls, leads using Google, Facebook. Again, you're picking what to call it, right? For dental implant, let's call it leads and we're gonna be using Google. This will allow you to see the type of results I can provide and allow us to get some good campaign data to see how much each referral is gonna cost you on average in the future. I work for free when I do trials. You'll just chip in some ad spend for me to use for the ads. Just a couple hundred is fine. Then I'll start the campaign. We'll go over the results and go from there. Does that sound good? Now, doesn't that sound so much uh, less in your face? Now, you may say, James, I don't want to work for free. Well, you know what? If you don't want to work for free uh, for your first client or two or three, then you need to reevaluate what you're willing to give up to build a huge business because I work for free all the time. All the time. And I've built a multi-million dollar agency I've built a $30 million education company. And quite frankly, I am more excited to work for free and to get the response of, wow, like I've, I've, you know, I've hired marketers in the past and I literally haven't gotten the kind of results from them as I have from you. And you didn't even charge me for your services. That's a lot better conversation to have. Um, and as I mentioned before, option two would be like, if you just don't know what to pitch them, let's talk. And then you have time to think about it. And if you take this uh, client qualification interview very seriously, and you, uh, you bring this into your agency, your business, especially if you're new, this is going to really, really, really help out. Uh, if you're a veteran, you probably have your own process, but this also could be good for your sales team to use. And if you have a sales team. And it just makes the conversation so easy. We've been using this since 2015, the same qualification. Uh, it's been updated a few times, depending on kind of the feedback that we get. The world is changing. Things change, right? And we've changed it. We've shortened it. We've removed questions. We've added questions. Uh, and we're constantly testing these things. Right now, this one is at its best point. And I'm excited for our, our student base to start using it and we actually started using it a month and a half ago or two months ago. And if um, you're not in our coaching program, but either way, if you comment down below, I'll send this PDF to you. No problem asked. Hope this was helpful. Like, subscribe, comment, and it helps push this video out for other agency owners or other people looking to start an agency who kind of are nervous about that conversation around, uh, around talking to potential clients. Appreciate your time. Talk soon.